Hello, I am the Maskermind. Got some really good fucking pickups. The first few I got are like newer releases. The first one I got here is is a Disney movie. But, you know, I actually do like this. I thought it was very fun. And it's uh Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually a pretty fun movie. If you haven't seen it, you should really check this out. I mean, yeah, it's, it's very childish, of course. Uh, usually most Disney movies are, but I, I like how it is. The whole <clears throat> video game aspect of it, you know. Um, I really like this. This is pretty enjoyable stuff. <laughs> the whole... There's a video game in this movie. There's like, kind of like a knockoff of Halo. And they called it Hero Hero's Duty or something like that. Yeah, Hero's Duty or some shit like that. So it's almost like a rip off between Halo and Call of Duty. <laughs> so definitely something to check out. I really like that one. And to go along with that I got Monsters Inc. You know, I really like this one too. Uh I I, I didn't really I kind of grew up with it, I kind of didn't, I mean, it came out in 2001, I was in middle school then, so, so technically I grew up with it, kind of, but, uh, yeah, this really looks amazing on Blu-ray, it really does, you should definitely check this out, um, you know, I've never seen an animated movie like this that looks so fucking clean and rich on, on Blu-ray. The colors just pop out. It's just brilliant. Definitely check it out. This one is a remake of uh, the original with Patrick Swayze, I believe. It's uh, Chris Hemsworth, Josh Peck, and I could not believe Josh Peck was in it. It was uh, Red Dawn. Josh Peck is from Dr that show Drake and Josh from Nickelodeon. Wow. I could not believe he was in this. Uh, he was all right in it. He just acted exactly like he did in fucking Drake and Josh. I just think it's kind of funny. Next is uh, Resident Evil Retribution. And I heard a lot of bad things about this one, but you know what? Fuck it. I really like this. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, a little different than most of them. Uh, they're basically in this simulator the whole time like a... Uh, Kind of like a training facility, basically. But it was still pretty neat. I liked it. Uh, this one, a lot of people say that, you know, this is like one of the best paranormal movies out there. But no, I'm going to have to disagree on that one. It's insidious. Yes, it was, it was all right. But it was not nothing. Everyone says it is way better than Sinister. I disagree. Sinister is awesome, I think. Insidious is, uh, it was, it was good, but, you know, there were some scenes I liked. The lipstick demon, you know, the, the, that demon that looked like a clown. The only scene I really liked was the part where that lipstick demon was in that room sharpening his claws or, on his fingers, and there was that really strange music going on in the background. I think you know what I'm talking about. Oh man, this next, this next, this one right here, man, really terrible. I just watched this and my God, Black Christmas. Jesus, this is terrible. Eh, you know, I like a lot of bad stuff, but this is really bad movie. It's really bad. <laughs> um, this, <laughs> it's just such a fucking joke. Um, I've never seen the original. I I know this is a remake. And I'm sure the original is a hell of a lot better than this mess. Some of the kills are cool in this. It's just the story is kind of gay. It's, it's a very stupid story. It reminds me of what they did with the new um, Texas Chainsaw. My God, that, mo that one was bad, too. I couldn't believe it. Just the story just made it automatically retarded. It did. But this, um, it wasn't the worst I've ever seen. I mean, it's 
one of them, pretty much. I mean, it's pretty bad. I mean, I'd, I'd watch it again just because of, you know, I, I kind of like to watch really terrible movies for some reason. But this, I don't know. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's in this, and she's like a really, uh, she's one of my favorite horror actresses. Uh, she's really hot. I mean, uh, kind of pissed me off that they killed her off in this, but... Yeah. This is probably one of my favorite, um... This is probably one of my favorite, uh, thrillers. Most people don't know this, that the guy who played the... Ah, oh, shit. You know, I can't forget. I forget his name. The doctor in Thor who played the doctor... And he was in the Avengers. He, his name is Stellan Skarsgård. And he's in this, and he's the villain in this. I really like this. I really love this. It's a the Glass House um, with uh, Lily Sobieski, Sobieski, Diane Lane, and Stellan Skarsgård. And, Wow, the acting in this is really fucking good. This is a good example of a good thriller. Um, basically, you know, this girl, her parents get killed off, or her parents get killed in a car accident, and she goes to live with uh, the, the, her two neighbors that they grew up with, you know, next door to, um, pretty much, like, take them in, and they become their legal guardians, and all this weird stuff starts to happen. And it's really creepy. This, part this, this house is just creepy. They got a pool out back, and, and the way, like in the middle of the night, the way the water kind of like reflects off the glass, off the windows in the house, and then it reflects off the glass onto the wall, and it just kind of moves around the room. It's just kind of creepy in the, at night when she walks through the hallway. But yeah. It's just really creepy. You really got to watch this. It's really cool. I remember always renting this at the library and getting scared when I was when I was younger. Um, I enjoy it a lot more now that I own this, and I'm really glad I found this only for two bucks. This next one, I fucking love this movie, and it's the first time I've ever seen this, and I can kick myself in the ass for never for not watching this. It's John Carpenter's They Live. Wow, this is really fucking amazing. Um, it, you know, some of it's on the cheesy side a little bit, but, you know, for the most part, it's a really good horror film. Uh, John Carpenter made this, and, uh, you know, pretty, pretty simple plot. You know, basically, the professional wrestler known as Rowdy Roddy Piper's in this, and he's actually a pretty good actor. Uh, you know, not the best, but not the worst. Um... He stumbles across these pair of sunglasses. I'm not going to tell you how he stumbles across them. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where he gets them. You just have to find it out. He stumbles across these sunglasses. And basically, when he... Basically, there's like an alien race on Earth. And the Earth... And basically, like... The way the world is, is covered up by popular media and subliminal messaging. And basically, the only way to see these things... This is with these sunglasses. You put them on and you see what the world is really like. And so it, it it's uh and at the end they end up figuring out a way how to destroy this uh, satellite signal that that basically, you know, connects everything with this signal. And so they destroy it and then everybody all the humans on the planet can see all this stuff now in the end. So that, that sequence is pretty neat, and this is definitely one to check out. Really good one. Really good one. Next one, I've not seen this, and I've never really been a big fan of... Uh, I've never really been too big of a fan of uh, B-movie anthologies. It's like a... It's kind of like Creep Show, and... Uh, Creep show, what else? Oh, we damn, Kane Hodder's in this. It's an anthology movie, kind of like, uh... 
Tularama. Like I said, it's an anthology movie. It's like basically an anthology movie, kind of Twilight Zone and um, Creep Show. It's kind of like Creep Show, Twilight Zone. It's kind of like four movies in one. Uh, I don't really like those kind of movies, but I just really love the fucking slope cover of this. I thought it was really awesome. This one is a uh, something that I thought looked awesome at first, but I watched it and I didn't really care for this. It was the Bay. I, I like sound footage movies, but this is more like a sound footage like montage. There was like it's just the whole movie's basically like clips of sound footage shit, going back and forth from the point of like from the point of view of a news reporter. And then, like, the point of view, like, the news footage, it, it just goes back and forth. It's kind of like a clusterfuck. I just didn't like it. This next one is a really weird one. I mean, I've watched this when I was growing up. But, uh, I really like this one, Candyman. It's really a fucking weird movie. It really is. But I, I do like this. kind of reminds me of Hellraiser. Just kind of like that confusing movie kind of thing. It's kind of confusing a little bit, but um, it's pretty good. Tony Todd's a creepy fucking guy. Now this one, I kind of like this a little bit, but the ending kind of was gay. My Bloody Valentine. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely not the best. I mean, it, I consider it to be a terrible movie, but it, it was alright. It was alright, kind of. This one I grew up watching this, too. And, uh, this is, uh, Kurt Russell, and I love Kurt Russell. This is, uh, Executive Decision. And a lot of you are probably looking at this, and you're probably thinking, Oh, shit, I remember that movie. Yep. Awesome, awesome film. I always loved this one, and... I thought it kind of sucked that Steven Seagal got killed in it. This one's another one I grew up with, sort of. Uh, fucking, uh, just uh, my favorite Nick, Nicolas Cage movie. I don't really like Nicolas Cage a whole lot, but this was pretty enjoyable. Hot Air. I fucking love this one. Awesome. It's just a really fun movie. Really good action in it. I say, put the bunny back in the box. <laughs> uh, I already have this one, but I had to get this just because it had a slip on it. And I like this slip cover. It's Rampage. I like this slip cover to this. Um, this is another one of those movies that I probably put on an episode of uh, Must Be Movies. This is just something you have to see this. It's a B movie, but it's so fucking well done. This is like a this is like a low budget film done right. It really is. Um, if you're watching this and you see this now, fucking go buy this or see it. It was on Netflix for a while, but I don't know if it is anymore. The only thing I don't like about this is. The cover. The front cover is very misleading. It shows him holding uh, two guns. It kind of looks like SR-15, but on the back you see him holding two submachine guns. And I can't tell exactly what what kind they are, but they're two submachine guns of some sort. But on the front he's holding two assault rifles. I don't really get that, but. Because he doesn't really use assault rifles in this. He just uses submachine guns. But anyways, it was a really good movie. I really loved this. It's in your face, which I really like that. This next one, um... This, this was alright. I, I really... <clears throat> ooh, I really thought this was going to be better. Sanctum. It, it was pretty decent. It wasn't like amazing. 
it has a guy in it that played Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four. And I was kind of surprised to see him in that. Next one is probably my favorite disaster movie. This, a, this has got a lot of good actors in it. Um, the This has Aaron Eckert in it, you know, the guy who played Harvey Dent. The core. God, this movie is fantastic. It really is. You know, they basically travel to the center of the earth to basically restart the uh, the core. You know, there's an inner core, which is all iron, and then the outer core is swirling molten lava. Basically, the swirling motion is what keeps our EM field in balance. And then it automatically somehow it stopped, and so the EM field just went out off balance, let all the let all the uh, gamma radiation in, and started just fucking the world up and shit. <laughs> and uh, they have to they have to put nuclear warheads down there and set them off in a certain order to where it will restart the core and make it spin again. But I really thought this was neat. I really did. I really like the whole idea. Uh, Really fun movie. I like it. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. And uh, remember, you've had a good time with the Mastermind. <laughs>